I hope you enjoyed that time of praise and worship. Amen. Give the Lord a hand on that. Wow, what a, what a great time. We'd like to very quickly uh, say again to, uh, if you notice, Christine was back on the piano for us today, and so it's great to have her back. She was part of the uh, search team when uh, the search began to look for Patrick and connected to him, and so we thought it fitting for her to come back and get to uh, reap some of the benefits of getting to work, all the work that she did. I, I mentioned in the first service, and I think I'm wearing her down, but I think I, I, I told her that, that we would offer, if she'd come back every Sunday, I would take a reduction in pay and pay her mileage to drive back down here. And I've had other people saying they'd pitch in. And... Not too bad, John. Yeah, John, yeah. John's got a little something to say, but we'll see. We'll see. Maybe, they, maybe they'll break down by the end of this service and if y'all beg or whatever. But uh, anyway, it is great to have, have her back. And John, good to have you here with us. And man, we love both of y'all. And thank you. Uh, for for your blessing us today but today I want to continue uh, and, and I know if, if once I say this you're going to be shocked but I want to continue the sermon that I shared last week because I only gave you half of it yeah I, I know you'll go half man that was only half it was a good thing that God laid on my heart to give you only half amen because I don't know if you could have handled the whole hour and a half that we'd had to been here to catch all of it but what I'm going to do today is I'm going to continue with this text of scripture that I began last week and last week we read out of Psalm 78 we read verses uh, 1 through 4 and we talked about history we talked about why history was important and needing and, and the need to make sure that people realize uh, uh, that idea of what history is about today we're going to be looking at the second part of it which is verses 5 through 8 so if you have your Bibles go ahead and turn there you at home Turn to Psalm 78, verses 5 through 8, and then let's stand in honor of reading God's word this morning. The Bible tells us here, For he, God, established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children that the generation to come might know them, again, the, the commandments, the children who would be born, that they would arise and declare them to their children that they may set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep His commandments and may not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that did not set its heart aright and whose spirit was not faithful to God. Lord, we thank You for today and thank You for again this wonderful time of praise and worship that we just experienced. And, and God, I pray as I always do that now that it's, it's my point to come, that Lord, I would not distract or hinder from what you've already begun in that praise and worship, but Lord, that you would take this message and, and you, you could intensify even the, the worship that we've had and it would complement it very well. Lord, I pray that the words that I'm about to say will not be my words, but Lord, they'll be yours. I pray, Father, that this message is not my message, but is also your message. And Father, I pray for the response for everyone here in this room and everyone watching on live stream. That, God, the response would be as you desire it. And, Father, it is in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. The, what I'm calling this is divine guidance or to run wild. My friends, this is where, where we are in our nation today. And I believe that, as I shared in the first service, that we are at a crossroads for our, for our nation for our families, for, for our church, and for the churches in America. I believe we're at a crossroads, and we have choices to be making very quickly. And the choice is going to be, do we follow God by divine guidance, or do we just run wild? Because that's where I believe, apart from God, that's what happens, is everybody just begins to run wild, begin to do things that uh, basically are doing what they want to do. And there is, it becomes chaos. And that's what we mean by running wild. Just doing whatever they want with no control, no restraint whatsoever. So that's what I want to look at this morning is that crossroads, the idea of what it is given to us. And because again, I believe that we're at a crossroads and, and, and we will be able to decide where will we go from here? Where are we going to go? And so what I want to look at is the scripture here tells us today that with our history or with the idea of God's word, with his testimony and all of that, that we are to declare that to families. This is a declaration to families today. So if you will, I believe this is a, a, a nation 
uh, a national uh, sermon. I believe this is a church sermon. But I truly believe this is a family sermon. This is a declaration to all of our families. As we read right here, we see the idea that we are to uh, declare the Word of God. Because I, can I tell you today that I believe it is the most important thing that we can do as a church. We need to be reaching people for Jesus. We need to be making declarations to the families. We as families need to be making declarations to our, to our nation. And we as a nation need to be making a declaration to the world. And that is to follow where God leads us to go. The Bible tells us in the book of Deuteronomy... Chapter 6, and a very familiar passage of Scripture, and these words which I command to you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, which we just heard. And you shall talk to them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. The Scripture is telling us, my friends, listen, it is, it is absolutely vital that we declare the Word of God to our families. It is imperative that we declare the Word of God to our children. Because this is the most important thing that we can do. Because the thing I want you to understand, my friends, is kids need spiritual guidance and structure. Amen? Young people need spiritual guidance and structure. Because if you don't have that guidance and if you don't have that structure, young kids or even uh, students run, can run wild. I, I declared that to, uh, to the first service and all the people that were teachers went, hey, Amen. Because if you're a teacher, you know what it's like to be bringing in kids from all over that come into one place that, that in their life they have no structure. And now you're trying to, as a teacher, to bring them in and give them guidance and structure and you see how difficult it is because you only have them for a short time but they're so used to doing whatever they want. My friends, listen to me. Might I share with you today that not only children need guidance and structure spiritually but I believe adults need guidance. I believe we need spiritual structure that if we don't have a spiritual structure, if I as your pastor don't have a spiritual structure in my life, I'm telling you I'm going to get off track very easily. And all of us are going to do that. So that's why I talk to you on a daily, almost a, a, a weekly basis. Every time that you get into, into one of my messages, somewhere in there, I will declare to you the need for the Word of God in your life on a daily basis. You all heard that before from me, right? We need it. Why? Because it's that structure. It's, it's, that, it's that guidance that we need on a regular basis. So young kids need it. Teenagers, students need it. Adults need it. We all need the structure. My friends, might I share with you today that we're experiencing in our lives, in our nation today, unstructure. And it's chaos. Proof, again, that we need to declare this to our families. But the thing I hear a lot of times from parents. Man, I've heard it over and over and over again. And praise the Lord, not so much here, but I'm telling you, I hear it all the time. Well, now, preacher, I don't want to force religion on my kids. I want them to be making decisions for themselves. That's something that's personal, and every one of them need to make it. Can I tell you that is the silliest comment I've ever heard people make about their kids? Listen to this. I, I didn't put it on the screen, so even you at home, you're going to have to listen carefully because this is a pretty long quote but it's by James Burton Kaufman and here's what he said the, si the silliest and most satanic attitude we have ever encountered in Christian parents is this oh well we're going to let Johnny make up his own mind indeed indeed that is exactly what the devil would have every Christian parent do let, the, let their kids make up their own mind on this if only Satan would be so neutral the evil one will exert every pressure possible to persuade children to forsake the faith and wallow in this evil. And if Christian parents will only stay out of the situation regarding their children's obedience to the gospel, Satan will almost certainly accomplish his purpose. And he quoted Kinder and said, as Kinder stated, the scriptures have no room for parental neutrality. My friends, listen to me. We need to, according to even this text here I just read, be sharing the Word of God with our kids, be sharing the Word of God with our families, be sharing the Word of God with our churches, be sharing the Word of God with our nation because we need to hear it. And so we as parents sometimes, oh, I don't want to push my kid away. Well, the thing that I always, hear, I always want to ask, and, and I tell my staff all the time, Listen, Steph and Patrick, you'll be hearing it from me too, hopefully in a few weeks. 
that we don't, as staff, I as pastor don't always get to say what I'm thinking. Amen? Because some, when I hear this comment, and I hear it, oh, I'm not going to force it on my kids. I want to say, do you make them take a bath? Do you give your kids a choice to take a bath? No. Why? Because you don't want them to be stinky. Amen? Do, 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 you, do you give your kids a choice to go to school? Of course not. Why? Because you don't want them to be stupid. Amen? Do you, do, you, do you tell your kids, especially the young ones, what time they're going to bed? Do you let them decide? No. Then my question is, is that if you won't let them decide to take a bath or not, if you won't let them decide to whether they're going to go to school and do their homework or not, if you're not going to let them decide what time they go to bed or what things they eat, why in heaven's name would you sit back and go, well, I'm going to let my kid make a decision on the most important thing that's ever in, presented to them? My friends, listen to me. If you don't think coming to Christ is the most important thing in your child's life, man, I want to pray for you. There is nothing more important. I, I, I tell you, I, I, I am so excited about the things going on in my daughter's lives. But man, when they receive Jesus into their life, that's the best thing ever happened to me. Oh, then why would I let them decide? Satan says, yeah, let them decide. Parents, step back. Let your kid decide that. And here's a, here, here's a quote. I don't know if this is going to be Facebook uh, worthy or not. But here's something that I was planning for this. Here's what came to my mind. I wanted to read this to you. You won't have to push your kids away because Satan will be pulling them. You don't have to push. He's pulling. And so what I want you to understand is we feel like we're going to push them away. You can't push them away because Satan is already pulling them. What you need to do, what we need to do, is we don't need to be pushing. We don't need to be worried about pushing anybody. We need to pull them to Jesus. Whatever we have to do, Pull our kids, pull our students, pull our friends, pull our neighbors. Bring them to Jesus because Satan is saying, leave them alone, church. Don't you feel like you're going to offend them? Don't you feel like you're going to hurt their feelings? Leave them alone. Can I tell you, even as a pastor, that my daughters got mad at me? I know. Yeah, stop it. We'll talk when we get home. But my kids will get mad. you know why? Because I didn't give them a choice. We're going to church. Well, but Dad, I don't want to go. I don't know you're going. Because I knew it was there that they were going to find the basis and the principles that I knew would make them successful in their lives. I didn't give my daughters a choice. Well, there you go, preacher. No. I, I, Satan wants us to give our kids. He wants us to let 10-year-olds make decisions on their own. No. No, this is the most important thing we can have is for their kids, our kids, to come. Because as I see it, as I see it right here, there's two choices of outcomes here. According to this scripture, two choices. And, and I told you earlier, we're, we're, we're at a crossroads. As a nation, we're at a crossroads, I believe, as, as, as families. We're at a crossroads as, as a church and as churches. We're at a crossroads. There's only two outcomes. There's not a variable of outcomes. They, 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 there's a bunch of outcomes, but they fit in two categories. And, and he describes them right here in this text. So let's get back to our text real quick. Look at verse 7. Okay, he talks about having declared the word. Declare it to your kids. Talk about it to them. Make them come. Make them hear the word. Why? The first outcome that they may have set their hope in God. The first thing, that, the first outcome that you're going to get on your decision at the crossroads is you can choose for them to have hope in God. Folks, hope is a good thing. Amen. Hope is something that you're not finding a lot in our society right now. You, you ask people about hope, and they're going to tell you, man, I don't see a whole lot of hope. You listen to the news, you don't hear about a whole lot of hope. You watch programs, and you don't hear about a whole lot of hope. But I'm here to tell you that if we will obey God, if we will turn our lives over to Him, He says right here 
that we have hope. And this is a difficult thing today, but here's what, here's, here's what I mean by having hope. Very quickly, just a couple things. i got just a few minutes here. First one is he says that because... Why do we have hope? Because God has a plan for you. Do you realize God has a purpose, for, a plan for every one of you? He has a direction. He has kind of established some guides. He says, look, I'm going to guide you. I have a plan. The worst thing that I, I remember when I was going to be a teacher, and one of the things they always told me over and over and over in teacher school was that if you, plan to, if you fail to have a plan, you're planning to fail. Because you can't walk in and you can't wing it. Folks, listen to me. We can't wing life. You start winging life and you're going to be all over the place. So God has a plan for us. And as I shared in the first service, sometimes we try to move away from God's plan. But He has a plan for us. So, so I don't have to wake up every day. All I have to do is say, God, here I am. Boy, how simple is that? God's got, already got a plan for me. And He has, listen to me, He will fulfill His purpose in you. I can't fulfill my purpose. I don't have the power. But oh, listen, my Heavenly Father, He can fulfill His purpose in me. And He's not going to let anything inter interrupt me because he, he has a purpose, He has a plan, and He's going to let me fulfill it. And here's the next thing, God will lead you. God will lead you. Sometimes we don't know what to do next. We don't know where to go. Well, that's pretty cool. That's okay. You know, it's pretty good when we don't know what to do next. If, if, now listen, everybody home, listen. It's a good thing for us maybe not to know what to do next if we'll turn to God to find out. Because He will lead you. The Bible says if you lack wisdom on what the situation is, if you lack wisdom on what the next step is, what, you, what should you do? Ask. Boy, that, that's pretty simple. If you don't know what to do and you lack wisdom, all you got to do is ask. Don't ask me. Don't ask each other. Teenagers, don't ask your friends. Because they don't know any more than you know. He said, man, if you lack wisdom, ask, and God will give you the wisdom. He'll bring people into your path that will have you wisdom. And now so he will complete what he started. Well, those are all good things, amen? This is my hope because I hope, and not just hope, like I tell you all the time, not crossing my fingers and, oh, I hope, I hope, I hope, but I mean blessed assurance that Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. We can sing about blessed assurance because God is there and he's going to take care of us. And the, the next one is God will light your path, man. He will. That's why I tell you over and over and over, get into the word of God on a daily basis because we need a light. We're, it's a, hey, can I tell you something? It's a dark world out there. It's a dark world. They need a light. I need a light to get around in this place. Here's our light. Get into this every single day, man, and he'll light your path. The last one, the last one is an amazing one. God is abundantly cool and good. God is abundantly good. Listen, isn't it great to know that God is good? Now listen, I shared in the first service, Danny, you, you, when I first came, you, man, you have a phrase that you say and people are trained to say it, amen? And what is it? God is good. And all the time. Amen. Hey, listen. A couple weeks ago, though, I shared a message with you that sometimes we say something over and over and over that it kind of loses its power. Sometimes we even say John 3, 16, the most powerful scripture in the Bible, I think, that it tells about the blood of Jesus Christ. And we just could say, for God so loved the word, he gave his only begotten son, who so should not perish, but have everlasting life. Oh, good. No, man, that's powerful. Sometimes I think we say, Danny, sometimes I think you lead us and we go, oh, God is good all the time. All the time. And you go, all the time? And we go, God is good. But you know what we should be doing? When Danny stands up and says, hey, God is good, we say, whoo, all the time. And he says, all the time? And we say, what? There, oh, now you mean it. Because we listen to me. We have a good God. And He loves us and He guides us. He secures us. He, he protects us. He indwells in us. Oh my goodness, who wouldn't want that? Who wants that outcome? I want that outcome. I want that. I want that for me. I want that for my kids. I want that for my church. I want that for my nation. I want that outcome. But listen, 
I told you there's two folds. My time just went off. My clicker, my, my buzzer just went off. So I got to hurry. Rebellion is certain. There's your other choice. There's your other choice. Cut and dry. Have hope in God or have rebellion in your life. Oh, there's no in-between here, folks. Oh, we like to maybe think there's an in-between. There's no in-between. There's no in-between. The Bible even tells us in Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no revelation, and the revelation here is the Word. The revelation is revealing the power of God, the Holy Spirit working us. Where there is no revelation, where there is no Word of God, where there is no acceptance of the Word of God in our lives, when there is rejection of the Word of God in our lives, the people cast off restraint. In other words, they, they, they begin to do whatever they want. Why? Because they're not listening to the Word of God in their lives. When there is no revelation, people will cast off those restraints. And you say, well, now wait a minute, preacher. You know what we want? We don't want to be held back by anything. We want to be free. But listen, those restraints are not like a ball and chain and tethered us to a pole. It's, the, it's kind of like the guardrails. It's guardrails. Those restraints are there to keep us from doing stupid stuff. Have you ever done anything stupid in your life? Well, you lie. Because nobody. some of y'all didn't raise your hand. There you go. Get them up. Get them up. Get them up. I know we're Southern Baptists, but I'm not asking you to go, Oh, Lord Jesus. I'm just saying, yeah, I, I've messed up. Yes, we've all messed up. Those restraints are there to, to guide us. How many of you, if you're, if you're parents, how many of you always wanted your kids to stay in the fence? Don't get out of the fence. Don't open the gate. As a matter of fact, some of you maybe put a little lock on the gate so the kids were getting smart and they could lift the little lever themselves and get out. You fixed that, didn't you? Why? Because you didn't want them leaving that restraint. Because you knew where they were going. Amen? I'm realizing there is, a, there is something in the pavement of the streets that calls out kids' names. Hey, come play on me. Because the first thing a kid does when they get out of the yard, what do they do? Boom, go to the street. You, you restrain them. My friend, that's what God is doing. When, when we reject the Word of God in our lives, the restraints are removed. And we then do a couple things very quickly. I'll wrap it up. First of all, we become stubborn and rebellious, for sure, without a doubt. He doesn't say they, and they, they might be or they may have, but they, 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 and may not be like their fathers. He said this is going to happen. That they will become a stubborn and rebellious generation, doing only what they want when they think it's right. Oh, but they have that right. Pastor, they're our kids. We want to love them and Love them to rebellion and stubbornness. Second one is their hearts are not set on God. Their mind might be, oh, we might be telling them stuff, but it's just that their heart is not set on God. God doesn't want our mind, He wants our hearts. Then He'll want our mind after our hearts. And the last one is there's no faithfulness. My friend, there's the outcome. There is the outcome to either have hope in God or to be rebellious. There is nothing in between. So we need to, as a church, we need to be able to take the Word of God, apply it into our lives. You folks at home need to take the Word of God and put it into your life. And you, we need to stand up and we need to start declaring to our families, declaring to our friends, declaring to our nation, declaring to other churches that God is alive, God is real, God is good, God is amazing. And we want that outcome. We want our world to have hope. My friends, listen to me. I, as your pastor, I am willing to fight for our nation today. I want to begin today to fight for our nation and not let them decide. Go out and declare the Word of God to them. I want to be, as your pastor, I want to fight for your family, you at home. I want to fight for your family. That's why I want to bow. I'm not going to get up here and I'm not going to teach what's going to tickle your ears. I want to get up here and I'm going to declare the Word of God to you because I want to fight for your families. I'm willing to stand up and fight for them. I'm willing to, listen, I'm willing to fight for your kids. 
Man, I'm willing to fight for them. Because I know there's only two outcomes for your kids. Hope in God or rebellion. That's it. So my question is today, all of you at home, everybody sitting in this congregation, what do you want? What outcome do you want? You only have two. And I told you at the beginning of this message, I believe with all my heart, we're at a crossroads. We got to go left or right. That wasn't a political statement. Could be if you wanted it, I guess, but... We got to go left or right. And I'm not going to tell you which one is, but one of them is love God and serve Him. The other one is to deny Him in your own life. But there's your outcome. So I want to I encourage you. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to know that He, uh, he loves you so much. And I want to declare to you at home, I want to declare to all of you here, God died for you. Jesus was sent to the cross just for you so that you could have eternal life. Choose Him today. I want to declare to you that God wants to use First Baptist West to, to, to lead Lawton to Jesus. And I believe that that's what we're called to do. I want to stand up and I want to fight for our city. I want to be a part of bringing hope to this nation. For your families, I want to bring hope to you. To your kids, I want your kids to have hope. I don't want them to be running and doing their own thing. But it's up to us, my friends. I want us to praise team to come on up as we wrap this thing up. We're about to enter into a time of praise and worship again, and they're going to be leading us in a song. And during this song, man, you, you, I want you to do a couple things. I want you to pray. If God leads you to pray, I want you to pray. I want you to sing with us. Man, I want you to lift up God, because this song is going to be a great song to lift him up. I'm just saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you. But I also want to, if, if there's a point that you need to respond to God, Man, I want you to respond to him right now. Just say, Lord, here I am. If you're at home and you, or, or, or you're watching this, then there's somebody in our church already that's waiting by a phone that if you'll just call our church, man, they want to pray with you. Right here, church, I want to pray with you right here. Somebody else will pray with you. Because, man, I want, you, I want you to have hope. Man, I want you to have hope. So we're going to do that in the next few moments. So I'm going to lead you in prayer. I'm going to ask you to stand. If you need to make a decision, would you come? If you're at home and you need to make a decision, call the church or call tomorrow, visit with me. I, mean, I, want, I want to visit with you personally. Give you hope. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you and we thank you for your love and your grace. God, we thank you for the way you watch over us. And today, Lord, as we step into this time, I ask, Father, that you strengthen every heart. Lord, you allow us to be able to enter into this time praising your name. But God, do not let us turn away from you now. Call us, Lord. I know Satan is trying to pull people away even as I speak. Lord, I want to pull. I won't worry about pushing people away. I want to tell them the truth. Oh, God, you are a good God that loves us. Speak to our hearts during this time. And Lord, if there's anyone that needs you, would you call them today? Let us experience you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to ask you to stand and let's join our praise.